up. Now I'm an engineer at UCSB, a national computer engineering. And this summer, I had, um, because of the Gorman Scholar Program, uh, I had the honor to work with uh, Professor Jim Walter and a mentor, uh, Osama al um, in um, helping enhance the spectral usage um, through duplex communication. So um, I have a question for you guys. Uh, so today's average data speed is around the 26.1 megabyte, megabytes per second. Uh, what will the average uh, data speed be in 2020? That's A, uh, 52.1, or B, 62.1, or C, 42.1. Uh, A. 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 Okay. Uh, it's actually A, uh, 52.1. And yes, it actually uh, almost doubles, as you can see. And that's not the only thing that kind of doubles that. The amount of connections, connect, uh, the amount of devices connected to the internet, um, the amount of traffic that the inter uh, internet is kind of going by actually doubles. And this doesn't really tell us much um, in the overall, I guess, I guess, the overall picture. But we can kind of assume that throughout the years, it's going to continuously grow, right? Uh, most likely exponentially. And what does this mean? This means that like the radio spectrum, which is kind of the traffic, uh, the highway that uh, the radio frequencies kind of go or uh, navigate through, will become congested in the upcoming years. And because that radio spectrum is not um, used as efficiently as it could be um, right now, it could be optimized so that it can be uh, used to its full potential in the future. So right now the Federal Commission's Federal Communication Commission um, allocates specific bands. Um, so like right here, uh, this band would be for the FM radio. Uh, this band right here would be for the a aviation. Um, the problem is that not all the services uh, use, the frequent, use the bands efficiently. So uh, what my, I guess, project looks through is uh, to look through specific bands and kind of understand how they are being used so that um, later on we can uh, kind of reallocate the uh, radio spectrum. So uh, my goals for the summer was to understand or uh, know what frequencies are being used and to see uh, once we know that, then we can know which frequencies are not being used. Um, also, what services on these frequencies, and additionally, uh, how they use them. Uh, so that we, if, when we have a hypothetical radio spectrum here, uh, we can have a more compact radio spectrum that has a, a free uh, band ready to use uh, for the future. So how do I, so in my data, I need to acquire the signals in order to kind of scan um, and see what frequencies are being used. Um, and I have a software defined radio here. And through the antenna, I receive a signal that I process through MATLAB and LabVIEW so that I can get a, a graph with amplitude for over time. And then after that, I uh, perform a method called the fast Fourier transform um, that gives me another graph that uh, has the power of the signal over the frequency. Now this graph um, kind of shows me what frequencies are uh, present in the signal that I acquired. So, um, sorry. So for example, here we have this spike. Um, these are these are frequencies that are present, and this actually here is, is what, to what is referred to as noise, and this actually. Uh, is a random process that can uh, increase the power or decrease the power of signals. And so I actually calculate a noise floor, and with that noise uh, floor, I there's a kind of a convention that um, we use a threshold that is 10 dBm over the noise floor. So what this threshold tells us is that anything above the threshold is a signal, anything below the threshold is not a signal, in the sense. Uh, the problem is that due to the, the noise um, power, the signals might increase or go over the threshold or go below the threshold. And really the only, I guess, solution to that is just to kind of increase the number of samples so that we know that the signals that were over the threshold more than they were under um, 
are actually signals. Uh, so yeah. And so now here, uh, what I've done is I've looked through a, a, a variety of LTE bands. And this one here is uh, T-Mobile and, and AT&T. Um, they share uh, the same kind of band. And this graph is a stem plot of frequencies that were over the threshold that I was talking about. And I've taken a number of samples. Um, and I've taken the ones that have, I guess, the ones that are more congested to kind of demonstrate that even at, a, at its like, highest usage, there are some gaps in between. And specifically, as you see here, um, through 7, 701 megahertz until 703 megahertz, there's a huge, I guess, just a blank gap that there's like, really no usage. Verizon, on the other hand, uses kind of most of its band, but as you can see, it's not really as dense as this one here. It's, it's very spread out, which even though it's, it's kind of using all of it, it's not necessarily using it to its full potential. And Sprint um, has a wider band. This is a one fifth, oh, 65 megahertz that it's using. And as you can tell, it's like really not efficient as we would hope it to be. Um, and so really, this here is the whole kind of radio spectrum, and I've only been looking at a very small amount. This is right here, the T-Mobile and at and um, Verizon, and Sprint. And this is just kind of, a, I guess, we can say is it really to the tip of the iceberg. Um, it's not, we really only looked at a small portion of the radio frequency, so we can't really reallocate the whole thing. Um, but it does give us an understanding of how, uh, I guess, the LTE bands are being used, and I guess the future, what the future uh, work should do is kind of look at a wider range of the spectrum and increase the efficiency of how um, we look at the spectrum because it's kind of not as efficient right now. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, CSAP, Gordon Scholar, uh, Dean, Dean Pierre, Wilskers and Office of the Dean Math and Life Science Physical Science and James Buckwalter and so on. Thank you. Any questions? Is there a reason why um, all the different, I guess, uh, cell phone carriers are doing their, are doing things differently? Like, like you showed all the different examples. Like. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific reason why they're doing things differently, or as they develop, they just started using frequencies and there's no rhyme or reason to? Well, um, what do you mean, like using them differently? Um, I guess. Yeah, like you say there's, like you show the spectrum of what's being used, right? Like yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. And there's a huge gap there, but there's a lot of density right next to it. Is there a reason for that, or? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, I guess. Um, this here is actually mostly T-Mobile, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, AT&T actually starts like around 704, which is right about here. Um, so I guess, no, no, I'm not, I'm not sure why they're, I guess I'm, I really can't come up with a reason um, as to why that, that would be right now. I guess we're trying to see why that, why there's gaps, yeah. yeah. That's it. Why don't you locate an area of a frequency band that's just not being used as efficiently as possible? What are like the steps that you or someone can take to then reallocate space on that frequency band to make it more efficient? Um, so, well, like the problem, I guess, the steps would be really, because the FCC is like the one that kind of command, like, it has the power to kind of do anything at all, really. So I guess the steps would be, because, the radio spectrum is so big, I, I feel like you would need to kind of, not necessarily look over it all, but like, like me kind of have some uh, evidence that there is like a very like inefficient way of using it and then kind of give it attention to the FCC, um, tell them, hey, uh, this needs to be reallocated in a more efficient way and then they have the power to kind of do that. We really, we really can't, I guess. Is it easy to reallocate them? Is it like costly? No. no, yeah, it's 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 kind of 
I guess one of like, the big problems is not, right? it's, it's not very easy to reallocate the spectrum, which is why it's kind of, I guess, a big deal to do it as, much, as fast as possible because I guess in the near future it's going to be harder and harder to get them together. Uh, even if we optimize basically the frequencies that we have and just fill in all the gaps, at some point are we, is there potential like we'll run out of space on the highway? I, I think so. Um, I'm not, maybe like, that's actually a good question, yeah. that's. Um, I feel like there would eventually be some way in which we're we no longer, or we can, there's a, there's a thing called, a, a, as I mentioned, a full duplex, which is where a, 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 an antenna can receive and send a signal at the same time using the same frequency or same, yeah, sort of, sort of, right? Um, so I think, I think that's kind of what we're moving towards. That way it's like we use less, it's like more efficient, I guess. But yeah, I think, I feel like eventually they would, we would run out of it. How are you able to distinguish between T-Mobile and AT&T? So these are all these are all kind of online. That they 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 display what uh, uh, frequencies they're using. So I just kind of um, I kind of looked at the frequencies that they're using. So I like, scanned. So I went online and saw like went online and see how which which bands T-Mobile or uh, AT&T or Verizon were using, and then I kind of um, scan through their through their bands. And also, do you know, I guess, where the the regions the scans are coming from, or how far they're detecting? How far? Um, the radius? I'm not sure, but this is more like just like local. Um, so, yeah, local and Santa Barbara. Do you have questions? Uh, yeah, signals for location space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you.